Now let's hear from some of our teachers that we've had the privilege to work with. I really liked that we were, had, you guys laid out the standards we needed. So we had known as like a school-wide we needed to focus on certain standards. So that was easier to kind of teach to. Because I know with English, sometimes you're teaching a lot of different standards in one day. So focusing on one and building upon that helped a lot better, especially to keep kids focused and knew what they needed to work on since they had an idea of what they were going to see on the test versus what they were struggling with. So you do notice a lot more kids getting better at it because when you let them practice a lot more, when you don't so much put a big grade on it, more of like we're letting you talk about this, letting you experience it, talk with your classmates, decide it out. The kids are a lot more willing to answer and they're able to see the growth because in the beginning I'd have one or two kids answering questions when I'd ask the whole class. But when they're able to talk two on two or three in small groups and discuss their answers without being penalized for having wrong answers, it gets, by the end of it, a lot more kids. It would be fair. It actually would. It really is. So I, what I think you should do is actually unhandicap, if that's possible, the people that can. How can we connect that to what? All right, so biggest aha moment. I have a student in one of my periods that has struggled all year long. So at the beginning of the year, he had F's and D's in class, but as we started focusing on especially FSA prep and all those different things, he was getting a lot more engaged. He was understanding more. Just this past like two weeks, we were working on an assignment where kids had to connect the theme with evidence without even reading the story. And he was one of my first students that was able to connect both of them, like all of them correctly and was able to back up why he did it. So he was able to tell me, this goes with this because you can see that the character is doing this in this line or something like that. I can't remember the exact line, but that kind of moment of like, I made a difference in this kid's life. Uh, my name is Kathy McClellan and I am a teacher at Clearwater High School. I teach English 10th grade and 9th grade. Okay, so show me, what is, how are you going to turn that into a show me Today in my class, you saw the kids working collaboratively to improve writing. And my, what I'm trying to do is get the students to do the work. Because before, I had been doing a lot of teacher, you know, direct teaching. But what I really want to get the students to do, and what, because of this training, what I've really been prompted to do is get the students to teach each other and to teach you know, themselves in these collaborative groups. So that's what you saw today as them collaborating together to improve. Because of the participation in the project, my planning became more focused on A, using student work to in my lessons, so anything that I would grade the night before, I would use that in my lessons the next day. And that immediately got the students to become more engaged. The other thing is just making sure every lesson had collaborative structures. So because of the training and the project work, um, some resources that I use now that I hadn't used before would be um, the acronym CC, so getting the students to know that acronym re really well, so it's like claim, or evidence, citation, elaboration. The students internalized that, and then they started teaching each other that acronym, and that was amazing. After I started using the CC acronym, I noticed a huge difference in their writing. And I didn't, it was sitting down with the trainers and having them sort of show me how to break it down, that I could go back and do it with the class and then show the students how to break it down. And then I had the students teaching each other how to break it down, and it started to splinter off and suddenly my class knew how to write a, a paragraph. Think about using imagery and metaphor right in comparison to show that you're hungry. We're gonna come back, okay? The biggest eye-opener for me when they were expected to struggle and work together was that they could do it. Because previously, I had been giving them way too much. I've, I've been sort of giving them the answers and not even realizing I was doing it. But then after this training, it sort of helped me to just let go and let them do it. And now every lesson, 
I, I try to work in a collaborative structure so that they can do it on their own because A, they learn it better. They enjoy learning from each other more than they want to learn from me as you know because it, it's boring if I'm just up there talking. It, it helps them to take ownership of the learning and it's, it's my, my favorite experience is when I walk around and they're teaching each other. Teachers really need to have kids talking to each other all the time, as often as they can in the classroom. That the, the best resource that can be used in any teacher's classroom is the student's work. They, uh, they relate to that. They learn from each other better than they learn from us, it seems like. So using authentic student work, uh, using very focused feedback so that the kids are able to see progress. If they can see themselves making gains, it inspires them to want to continue to do the work and it motivates them to stay engaged. I think that for planning, the best, uh, the biggest change, the best change that I made was having students look at their own work and look at their own data before they moved forward. Um, kind of helped to create a roadmap for where we were going in the next few days or even in the next few weeks. And if they had a place that they knew that they were starting from, they could use that as a jumping off point for the work, the progress that they needed to make. Smart move, get the numbers down first. Cool, and don't forget, there's more than one right way to do this. Rather than having them speak out to the whole class, they gain a little confidence by collaborating in groups of three or four. And then they can take that information from the three or four together, sort of synthesize it, and create a more complete, meaningful answer when they're asked to share with the whole class. I think uh, for me, one of the big aha moments was actually on test day, which sounds crazy, but we went into the test before the testing instructor started with the instruction. All my students sat down with a piece of paper and started writing out their plan. I had never seen that before. It shows me that they really bought in, they really showed a sense of agency, as soon as we got there, without any instruction from me, before the directions even started, they were sitting down, they were focused with a pen and paper in their hand, and they started making a plan. That rocked my world. I would recommend... Put them in order. Yeah, they're numbered for you. So I would put them in order by number first. Oh, we would just put them in matching them, then we would put them in Sure. Uh, I don't have a teaching background. I have a philosophy degree and a little bit of business background. So for me, this was a chance to see how other teachers work more than I've ever had an opportunity before. So it was almost a paradigm shift from the way that I was uh, giving instruction in the past to the way I was giving instruction now. I think the biggest shift was having the students really take an active role and, a, and, and gain a bit of agency in the classroom so that they knew what they had to do going forward. So the rest has to make some inferences. So go ahead and discuss it with your partner. My name is Mindy Salippo and I teach English Language Arts here at Clearwater High School. This is my first year teaching. It's D. It's D. Yeah. The biggest change in my planning as a result of this project was actually that I did a lot more chunking that I, than I used to do before. Um, I don't think that before I was breaking it down enough for the students and once I started doing that, um, breaking it down more, um, they, they were starting to get it. So maybe go back to your reading and it says, what can you infer? Oh, okay. oh. The biggest differences in the resources that I use now, um, I have started using much shorter texts because we were using much longer texts that I think I would, they were almost losing attention and they weren't ready for that yet. And so when I started using those short synthesis articles, it was easier for them to understand the material, to get it, and then we could graduate into a longer text. And with those short synthesis articles, one of the most valuable things that we taught with them was the elaboration piece. And that was the biggest takeaway that my students had from the FSA. We used the technique of CC, where um, during their body paragraphs, they had to use claim, evidence, citation, and elaboration. And because of those short synthesis articles, it was very easy for them to use all four of those in each of their body paragraphs 
to cite their claim, to find their evidence, cite it, and then elaborate. So because it was a very small targeted area, it was very easy for them to practice that very specific technique and they they got very very proficient. So, they talk about yes. like how they show yes. how the biggest so surprise for me when I started using um, more collaborative structures during this FSA prep was I found that I stopped rescuing them so much. Um, sometimes in order to keep going, I would kind of give them the answer a little bit so that we could move along. But when they were in pairs, what started happening was instead of me rescuing them, I would say to them, well, let's discuss it with your partners. And then they would start to talk about it and I stopped rescuing them and they were doing more of the work, which is, I think, what we, what we really want them to do. Was that something that you took from your own knowledge or was that something that you read in the text? Yes, so that's what made that incorrect, right? Yeah. Right, you have to remember now, that's why A wasn't the right answer, was because you were using that from your own knowledge. I had an aha moment with one of my students just the other day, and um, it, was a, it was a wonderful moment for me, and I was reading over a piece of writing that she had, and she turned to me and she said, you're not saying anything, and she goes, it must be bad. And I looked at her and I said, absolutely not. This brings me so much joy this piece of writing. I said, because what you need to understand is at the beginning of the year, you were writing things, just your thoughts down on a topic. And what I see here is you using the technique that we've been practicing. If you look, here is your claim. Here is the evidence that you just got from the text and you're citing it. And then you just use one of the analysis sentence starters that we've been practicing and now you're elaborating and this gives me so much joy that I'm speechless and that was just such a moment for me and it was a moment for her too because she was so excited and we were so proud together because we did it together and it was a, just a really great moment for both of us and so to see that much growth in a student was just a really great moment for both of us. Okay so as a first year teacher um, it was just amazing having these coaches come in and, and help and be there with me to, to help me. I'm just somebody who will, you know, I, I just want all of the resources I can to do the best that I can for my, for my students. And having them come in and show me, you know, how to get to those standards, how to break those standards down, unpacking them, to, to make sure that I'm hitting all of the targets, to make sure that I can get the most student growth for each of them, I think was the best thing that could have happened. So the final thing that we recognized was a kind of an anchoring element in any kind of work that you do to have quick progress in a classroom is that your resources have to be um, short, sweet, and directly to the point, whatever that standard is, focused completely on that standard.